Hi everyone! Thanks for stopping by our table of disappointment. This is How They Got Away, the show where we discuss the unsatisfying endings to your favorite unsolved or unpunished true crime and corporate greed stories. I'm your host, Annalise, with my co-host... This is Kelsey, coming to you live from my closet, attempting to get that sweet, sweet crisp audio. (laughs) And we have two guests with us today. Stephanie, not coming to you from the closet... And Anna, also not coming to you from the closet, but from the attic. (laughs) Ayyyy. So, we have an interesting case today that involves the unsolved murder of a murderer. Dun, dun, dun. Are we sure that's a mystery, though? (laughs) Because I feel like I can think of a few people. I don't even know this story, but I feel like I can think of a few people just right off the bat. Oh, yeah. This is... This has probably happened many times over, but I think it's going to be a fun one. So, we'll start in August 1979, near Du Bois, uh, Idaho, near Du Bois, Idaho, in this Buffalo Cave system. From what I understand, this is a pretty remote area. The cave system is a thousand feet deep, and several areas had once been designated as bomb shelters during the Cold War. You know it's good. You know, you know you're in a great political situation where your town is like, listen, we've got a plan. Go hide in these dank, scary, spooky, sketchy caves. It's perfect. <laughs> it was probably also, though, I mean, these cave systems are probably pretty, in those areas, pretty well structured. Better than being in a house above ground if you think a missile's gonna come and blow up the town. <laughs> Is that true about cave systems, though? Because I feel like, and I don't know this because I don't go spelunking, but I feel like you always hear about cavens in caves. It depends on the area. And to be fair, a lot of cavens kind of happen because it's also, you know, man being like, are we going to find some really cool rocks in here? Punches the rocks. Oh my God, why is everything falling around us? How could that be? Most of the time when I hear about cavens, it's about, like, guys digging around. Maybe they're fine. Who knows? Like Annalise said, it could also be depending on location. So. I think if you're also worried about radiation, being underground is probably going to be the best spot. And these are pretty deep caves. Mole people, so. let's go. That's true. If you're at that point, you know, it's... It's either die of radiation in a horrible fashion or maybe get caved in. These are your two choices. So, on this day, a family was having a pretty normal day outside looking for arrowheads when they stumbled upon a burlap sack. Wait, in the caves. They're in the caves. They're, like, around the cave area, yeah. They, they've gone in looking for arrowhead, arrowheads, kind of traveled in from there. Okay. I don't, I don't live by a cave system. I don't. But have you ever seen those maps of, like, the United States cave systems, like, known cave systems, and then it's overlaid with the map of, like, locations people have gone missing, and there's this huge area in the, like, Tennessee, Virginia area that is just lit up like the 4th of July with missing persons, and then you just take that part away and you just see this huge network of caves right where that big spot of missing people is? No, I can't say I've looked at that. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, maybe cave systems, not the best place for a family outing. Although it was 1979, what else are you going to do? Go on the internet? No. It's a lot safer in 1980, don't worry. But you know what it is great for? Hiding bodies! Yes, it's great for hiding bodies. I mean, is it or is it also like people have tried to mine here and you know every now and then you just lose a person and you're just like well will we ever find them again the answer is no but I also don't know shit about mining things about mining (laughs) I don't know things about mining so maybe it's also that on the grand list of things Anna knows not mining is not on that list Uh, sorry I don't play minecraft I'm just stuck why are they looking for arrowheads in a cave they're looking around the cave and I mean there's like There was a Native American population around Idaho, so it's not like you wouldn't find arrowheads. Is that a euphemism for something? Were they doing a drug deal? Like, this was—it was a family. So you never.
never know what people are up to. I would hope not. I mean, I did see some... Remember... Okay, we're not going to get into this story. Anyway, so what they found in this burlap sack... It was slightly buried, and there had been just over time, kind of, you know, over time things shift and started to peek out. It was a burlap sack with the torso of a man. Okay, because I was going to say, I, as you were leading up to that, I was like, don't tell me that they just found a partially buried burlap sack in a cave and thought to themselves, hmm, let's go see what's in that. Because I feel like you hear that, like, sometimes I'll see, like, a trash bag on the side of the highway that like has clearly fallen off a truck but in my mind i'm like what if there's a body in there what if there's a body in there it would take another 40 years to identify who this man was is there a whole body in this burlap sack or just the torso just the torso what are you defining as torso? Like, are there arms? Arms do not count as torso. No limbs. It's literally no head, no limbs, just the torso. But was it, like, purposeful removed? Or just that was all that's left and, like, the rest has been pulled away by maybe animals? Girl, let Annalise talk. Let her okay. preach. Well, we'll get there. Never. I have questions. Answer my In questions, March, Annalise. In March 1991... An 11-year-old girl was out exploring in another part of the same cave system. Was she with parents? And uncovered. Nah, she's just chilling. Guys! Stop going by the cave! <laughs> Latchkey kid. She, she uncovered a mummified hand. Oh my god. After this, investigators started to actually search the entire caves and ended up uncovering an arm and two legs wrapped in burlap nearby. Did they not search the caves after finding, I don't know, a torso? Were they just, they- It's the 70s! What? Did they just, like, find it at the mouth of the cave and go, hmm, weird. No need to look it's for it. It's the end of the 70s, too. It's 79. Uh, when it became 1980, they said, forget about it. Well, also, it's Idaho. What more, what other stuff do you have to look for? to look at to investigate what else is going on in idaho that you can't devote resources to the torso in a cave what do they do in idaho oh my god actually? make potatoes they have potato crimes that's true uh we're we're from the east coast so we don't really know anything about midwest or farther west so enlighten us i guess in the future but we don't know jack about idaho just potatoes literally all we know about idaho. Good potatoes thank you At this point, the person became known as the Buffalo Cave John Doe. And that was all that was known Did about him. Did they ever find a, a head? Time. Sorry. No head. So no head. So what they knew at this time was that he was a white male, 25 to 40 years old, 5 feet 6 inches to 6 feet 2 inches, and had reddish brown hair after they got some DNA, they could figure out that he had reddish brown hair. Now, I know that they only had some limbs to work with mm -hmm. here. And I know that, like, they weren't in the best condition. But 5'6 six to 6'2 six is the most useless height range. And also, again, I don't know. They don't know, know how a big the head is! Wings, but. <laughs> You're but not like, going to mention the age gap? Um, that sounds like literally every male Idaho. 25 to 40? I mean, the age gap is the hardest one to figure out, especially without a skull. So, like, I could see that. Like, past certain things fusing, like the growth plates, unless you have the skull, it's kind of really hard to tell. And that is from my one forensic science I like how you say that and college. you go all off about height. And then Annalise also said, because he has no head. And you're like, well, that doesn't matter. Look at you now. Look at you now in the closet. Crouching. Just don't even bother with the height range if you, do if you have that much. Just don't say anything about height. You don't know. Just say a man of height. I mean... I think it's better to kind of have that range so you go like, hey, y'all already know anyone missing from this time, which I don't know how medical records and all that jazz are, but it's like, 
Well, actually, no. Annalise will tell us in the future. But in the future. <laughs> so there was an effort made in 2015 to find the victim's head when Clark County Sheriff Bart May approached a team at Idaho State University composed of both staff and graduate students to help the search. So they had gone... 2015 to 1979? Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. 1979, we find a torso. 1991, we find a hand and some various bits. 2015, someone finally is like, hey, we don't have anything else going on. Let's go look for a head. And also, a uni... Listen, what major are you reaching out to that you're like, hey... Do you want to go spelunking in some caves to find a head? What kind of person in their, like, late teens, early 20s is like, yeah, I'll go into a cave system to look for a head that's, like, 20 years old. I'm fine with that. Don't worry. I'm in therapy already. What? First, that from 1979, that would be a 36-year difference. So that's a 36-year-old head, at least. Second, if it's even in the caves, if it's even in the caves, second, the person they're appealing to is me because I have an inherent curiosity and I would not mind going in a cave. (laughs) They go, Stephanie, would you like to go to Idaho and look at these caves and possibly help us find the missing parts of this guy's body? Makes me think of Steel Ball Run 7 where they're finding parts of uh, Jesus Christ himself. It's not really a spoiler. They talk about this because it's a huge funny little meme jesus christ is the next jojo of the series not confirmed um i don't know no that's what i'm thinking about right now because it's literally a race around the whole u.s and they're just like yo we're trying to find this guy's body parts and then they're just like oh my god it's jesus christ himself his hand his eyes well let me tell you it was it was the school's anthropology department okay that that makes more sense (laughs) But also, what is the overlap between anthropology students and people who can rock climb? Because cave climbing is a whole other ball game from just climbing in a little rock climbing gym. Like, that is some serious business. I mean, there was, we start the story with a family in 1979 spelunking, so there's definitely places where you No, can... they weren't spelunking. Well, whatever. They were looking for arrowheads. They were outside arrowheads. the cave. But they got in the cave if they were looking like... for the burlap sack. You agree this. I assume it was at, like, the head of the cave. Like, you just walk in and you see it. How far were they in this? I'm not sure how far into the cave. I don't think it was, like, extensively into the cave system. But just to wrap up what was happening with the students. So what they had done is that they went out and they used a scanning device to get, like, a three-dimensional map of the cave system. Because they didn't even have that yet. They had to put in the legwork to kind of get a map of where to look. And then they started to actually do the, like, work of trying to, you know, excavate and go through. They didn't come up with anything. Because I don't think the head is in the cave. Also, I'm sorry, this cave system doesn't even have a map. And this, I'm thinking back to the 1991 11-year-old girl who's just wandering in these cave systems. What happens if she gets lost? Don't worry, no one has a map of this cave system. Well, here's the thing. They never find the head. Of course, because it's not in the cave. Whoever did this has it. You don't cut, chop up a body into bits, and then you're not a very sane human if you do that. So you seem also like the kind of person who would keep a head. So now we do another jump when finally in 2019, they were able to identify the body when a team of Idaho University at, sorry, when a team at Idaho State University reached out to DNA Doe Project for assistance. DNA Doe Project, like it sounds, is an organization that, as the website states, investig- uses investigative genetic genealogy to identify John and Jane Doe unidentified remains. This organization worked in collaboration with this company, Othram, it's an interesting name, and we're able to build a family tree using forensic genealogy, which sounds so cool. Um, they then used police records and compared them to DNA with a living grandchild. From this, they found that John Doe was deceased from pioneers in Utah who traveled <laughs> to the area. They killed him off. 
Did I say deceased and so descended? Yes. You know, death on the brain. <laughs> deceased from pioneers. So he was descended from pioneers in Utah who traveled to the area with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. His grandfather was likely a polygamist with four wives. This meant that there were hundreds of cousins and relatives that they had to search through in order to pinpoint who this man was. That's just assuming they even have enough genetic profiles of these people because, like, for the forensic genealogy, you need your DNA in the system. My DNA is not in the system. I don't think. (laughs) Well, no, because my aunt did a genealogy kit. It wasn't, like, through the police, but also, you know, there's no litigation or or laws around what companies who take your DNA data can do with that DNA data. So it might be sold to the police. So half, like a quarter of my DNA is somewhere. (laughs) My sister and cousin both sold their DNA. They pretty much have Stephanie on profile now. So they used a lot of records after they kind of had this huge family tree to have to go through, including newspaper articles and gravestone information. They found one man whose gravestone was what is called a cenotaph, which is essentially an empty tomb. So it was a gravestone with no body. And so this is how they matched up their John Doe. So, who was this man? To answer that, we go all the way back to 1870 in Payson, Utah Territory with Joseph Henry Loveless, who is our John Doe. Loveless! In 1904... Loveless. There are some fun last names He's Loveless. Here. I feel like I've heard this case. Now it sounds like I remember this case. It's all coming back to you. Like a little. It's all coming back to me. Oh, man, though. I, like, feel like it's so hard to remember that the 1800s is maybe two generations back. No, maybe three. Like, for mm-hmm. us, it would be, like, three. But it's so close. It's, like, it's interesting... I guess just the passage of time is interesting, (laughs) is what it all boils down to. Everything seems so close yet so far. (laughs) Strange, the passage of time. (laughs) So, in 1904... Sorry? No, just thinking of the passage of time and, like, Mr. Gorbachev just died. You're gonna say Mr. Gorbachev just died? Like, that's the most, like, of note death today? (laughs) For those of you who are tuning in to this much after we record, it is September 8th and the Queen just died today. Yeah, I don't know, because this case started in 79. I'm thinking of the 70s and the Berlin Wall, okay? I thought you were saying, like, today. Okay, well, we gotta go to a different 70s for 1870s. We gotta, okay, we're going to 1870s now. It is interesting that it starts in the, it starts in the 70s and then also starts in the 70s, though. That's kind of interesting. Well, now we're jumping forward again. So, in 1904, Loveless married his first wife, Harriet Jane Did she take Patty his last Savage. name? Savage. Oh, my God. Savage. I forgot that was her last name. Did she take his last name? Those are both such cool last names. Well. How do you pick? So, they got married, had their first child, and then divorced in Did the same year. Did they concatenate their last names on the kid? Because then the kid would be Loveless Savage. Or, no, Savage Loveless is not as good. (laughs) Loveless Savage is just... Mm. (laughs) I just couldn't make that up if I tried. So after this, he married Agnes Octavia Caldwell and had four children. But all of this isn't really the most interesting part, so we're going to go to the 1910s. What do you think Loveless did for a yeah, living? Yeah, forget about you falling in love and having children. <laughs> we don't care about no. that. Get to the tea. What do you think this man did for a living? I was going to say a joke and say he was a male escort, but uh, I don't think, I don't, <laughs> like, theoretically. <laughs> Loveless would have been so good for like, that. Oh, I am a man with no love. Will there be someone out there willing to teach me? And all the women and whoever will be like, oh, that's so sad. I'll teach you. I don't know. I don't know, Jack. I want to say a butcher, because I only kind of remember this case. Any guesses, Stephanie? Um, well, I think he said something during dinner, so I think I know kind of what he did, so I don't feel like I could give a real guess. I'm just going to say he was a professional hitchhiker. Well, 
Loveless was a bootlegger. Oh, you know what I was gonna say, bootlegger, and I was like, I can't remember the right time frame for boot for prohibition, so I don't want to like out myself as not remembering when prohibition happened by saying bootlegger. I, I like that our options were male escort, butcher, or a professional hitchhiker, and all of us were like, oh, bootlegger. Oh my god, it's perfect for him. Well, this is before prohibition. So I was right to be cautious about saying he was a bootlegger because Prohibition hadn't happened yet. Yeah, Prohibition was 1920 to 1933. But this would have been the time when people were cracking down on it and probably state laws were changing for it. He was a bootlegger before it was cool. (laughs) Well, His last name was Loveless. He was a bootlegger before he was cool. This man is a hipster. Well, he was arrested in 1914 (laughs) for bootlegging. (laughs) He was then released, arrested again on the same charge a few months later, and then this kicked off a series of captures and escapes for Loveless. He escaped after that second arrest by sawing through jail bars, which is something that comes right out of a movie. Gotta, like, know the guards by name. So you're just like, hey, Jeff. Hey, Loveless. Gonna escape tonight, Loveless? No, you know I wouldn't do that to you, Jeff. Starts filing at the bars furiously. Remember, I only do it at night. You're here in the day. I mean, maybe I'll switch it up. Hey, Jeff, how's the kids? How's the wife? Just laying over a hole, like... Uh, I'm just thinking, like, they know that he comes with, like, a little file. and just They're like, you have the file? You know I don't. Did we check his boot? <laughs> no. 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 Loveless went by multiple different aliases, such as Charles Smith, Walter Currens, and Walter Keynes. I feel like you kind of want your aliases to be kind of generic, but when your name is Loveless and then your aliases are so boring, I'm like, oh, wasted potential. I mean, you remember our last podcast, remember? <laughs> You remember he was like, uh, Joseph, yeah, and everyone's like, you dumb bitch, you dumb bitch. Yeah, he was, he literally just different iterations of the same name. I mean, you want to be able to respond to it, so I guess I get it, but still. It's like playing telephone, you get the name worse every time. For the last case, last case. So, Loveless, this is worth crime, occurred in 1916. After he had yet again escaped from jail, sawing through jail bars, hopping on a train. A Tuesday. He, he this time was booked under Walter Guerin. And he ended up back in Du Bois, Idaho, where his common law wife, I guess they didn't actually get married, um, but his common law wife, Agnes, lived there. On May 5th, at some point during the night, Loveless murdered Agnes with an axe. Dude, just, like, leave the house. Just go somewhere else. Or divorce. You've divorced before. You know that's an option. There was no reason I could find why he did this. The crime got reported that it was done by Charles Smith, one of his aliases. Loveless was caught and then arrested under the name of Walter um, Karens. So they thought it was Charles he got booked under Walter Karens. They thought that Charles Smith was the alias. So it was really confusing for people to know who this was, especially when you go back in records. They had to prove that Charles Smith, Walter Karens, and Loveless were all the same people in order to identify the body. Here's a question Did Agnes know his actual name? You know, I don't know. Because if people thought it was her husband, and they thought it was Charles Smith, wouldn't she have corrected, unless she was in on it, and was like, yes, that is my husband, Charles Smith, and definitely Here's not thing. Walter Guerin or any other person. Agnes was also suspected to be a bootlegger who went by the alias Ada Smith. You know what? Good for her. Oh, them shaking hands like, oh yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna bootleg some alcohol. Which goes with Charles Smith, so maybe they thought Ada Smith and Charles Smith were married instead of Agnes and 
So maybe she, like, competed Joseph. with him or something? I think it's Ada. A-D-A, yeah, Ada. right? Did I say Ada? Oh, it sounded... Yeah. Maybe she, like, did something that, like, stepped on his bootleg turf or something that competed with his business, maybe, and he took that personally. Like, he'd just been caught again, so maybe she, like, took over some part of his thing and he took that personally or something? Maybe. So according to the Idaho Republican, an Idaho Republican article from May 16th, he, Loveless, told several stories saying that he thought the woman's former husband killed her. He said he was bound north for a supply of whiskey for his wife to dispose of in Du Bois. Apparently at Agnes's funeral, one of his children said, Papa never stayed in jail very long and he'll be out soon. How old was this kid when he said this? I don't know, but the kid was right. On May 18th, Loveless, yet again, escaped from jail. This time he escaped from St. Anthony Jail using a saw blade hidden in his shoe and went on the run. I feel like that's got to be his go-to, too. You know, I feel like this whole time he's been hiding stuff in his shoes, like metal files, and then just doing that. Like, nowadays, the prison system's very different. And I realize that. I'm I'm not necessarily saying for the better. But a cursory search, guys. Just a little bit. There is very little known about what happened next. His wanter posted his wanted poster listed the same clothes as he was wearing when they found the body later on. And one of the forensic genealogists from the DNA Doe project, Lee Brigham Redgrave, suspected that or speculated that Loveless had died in that same year, 1916. So he'd been dead for like, oh shoot, can I do math? Like 86, 83 years before he was ever found? 82 years, I can do math. 1916 to 1979. 83, I was right the first, the third time. No, way so less 83 than 83 years, Susan. No, subtract. 1916? Subtract- 16 minus 79. I am adding things and subtracting. <laughs> Let me just try again. 63, babe. 63. Look at that calculator. You can't judge me for it when you used a calculator. Okay. <clears throat> try again. So he had been dead and assumably in the cave for 63 years before he was ever found. Are these caves, like, close to the town? Are these, like, places that people go frequently or just not? There's cases that are like that, though. Like, bog body-wise, body, body wise, I know there's a few cases that are like that where they're just like, oh my god, we found a body. But I know there's one case in England where they talk about this, and he, this guy was from the medieval ages or something, and they're just like, what the heck? But it depends on, like, the condition they were True. in. True. So. But bogs are their own beast. Yeah. They <laughs> release you when they want to. And considering that, well, this is supposed to be a pretty remote area, but also considering the time from the torso to even finding another piece of the body, and then they had to do an actual concentrated search, I don't think it was well-traveled area. But here's what... That's true, but it's still mind-boggling to me that they didn't do, like, a more extensive search upon finding a torso. Yeah. Well, here's what the Clark County Sheriff, Bart May, the same one who tried to do the hunt for the head told CNN. Back in 1916, it was the Wild West up here, and most likely, the locals took care of the problem. Do, 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 do. <laughs> they go, oh my god, how could, how could you do that to a bootleg lady? That's it, you're done for, kiddo. Are we sure there's not more bodies in that cave system of the locals taking care of the problem? Just throwing that out there. Oh, I bet there was. This extensive cave system, there's got to be more bodies in that cave system. But this actually, I think, is not a very disappointing story. I think it's actually pretty... I like the idea of a murderer getting his comeuppance. They, people had speculated that he was chopped up into pieces like he might have chopped up his wife. And so it was kind of like a, this is the karma that you get. I do love a karma-ridden death. I do love a karma-ridden death. 
I wonder, I don't know, it doesn't sound like we really know a whole lot about them or their relationship because it was ages ago and people don't write hot goss down much, but I have to wonder if their abuse, their relationship was abusive at all and this was just some sort of culmination of that. I, it is fascinating to me that they, they just, he just murdered her one night. We don't know why. It could be anything. We also don't know why he divorced his first wife. True. And divorce was not common back then. She was a prude. (laughs) They had one kid together, Anna. Well, I mean, you can still have one child and still be a prude. I don't know. Maybe because she was too savage. He had four kids with Ada and he had one with Hattie. I mean, five kids seems like a normal amount for that time. And all the kids were like, yeah, he doesn't stay out of jail. I think he might have not been the best character. I mean, he was in kind of shady business. He kept escaping jail. He wasn't really going to abide by the laws. So I imagine if he might have been abusive, he also could have gotten into just an argument over... It could have been, like you said before, Kelsey, over business. And then it became what it did. I really have no idea. And there's so little about him and what his life was like at that time. Were there any other theories about why he died? Or is it just the one? No, people really just have accepted that the locals took care of it, and this was kind of like the retribution of the town for what he had done. They also, I imagine this town was pretty fed up with... Yeah, a little. I imagine the town was kind of fed up with this guy just, like, doing all these crimes. I think he also apparently did some fraudulent, like, fraud crimes. He did a a couple different things. Bootlegging is what he was most known for. But it could have also been that this was, like, the last straw for the town. And they're like, we can't have this guy constantly escaping jail and being a threat to us. So they took care of the problem. Yeah, I have to... I mean, you murder your wife. That's that's kind of a big one. That's a big deal. But I also... I have to wonder, you know, if he's doing fraud on top of other stuff. He's, like... He's cheating out the townspeople, I assume. That's, like, the only people around for him to commit fraud against. So, you know, I, I bet it was just the, like... That's it. I have to wonder what the town's, like, attitude was about bootleggers, though. Because I don't... That has to be, like, a good portion of a nearish to the border town's business and economy is bootlegging over the border. Or anywhere. I assume it was over the border. Real quick, I'm going to share my... Do we have a picture of him? Is that what you're going to show us? Yes, I'm going to show you the... Um... Because that's, that's the other thing, too, is that we have we know so little about his life that we don't know enough to know if he there were... He looks like a cowboy. He does! Why does he look like that? Oh, God. Oh, he looks so scary. He looks like the Phantom of the Opera. Oh, oh my God. You would find him at Spearm Halloween. Freddy Krueger. I thought this was like an artistic rendering made by the police or like the people, the anthropologists, but this is just a picture of him, isn't it? He looks like he's wearing skin over his face. Like, that looks like it's a face mask, and a terrible one at that. But that's just his face. I just can't get over how much of a cowboy he looks like. He has, like, the hat. Yes! This looks like an old version of, you know, you guys know the mask series, movies, right? Like, this is what it kind of looks like, but if you put it, if they made it in the 1960s kind of deal, I don't know, he looks like a, yes. mom, can we have Freddy Krueger? We have Freddy Krueger at home. This is the guy you find. Look at him. He's wearing a turtleneck sweater and everything. Well, I, you listeners, you can't see this, but if you look him up, I think I'm right. Though, to be fair. No, 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 no. I have a picture of my great 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 grandfather whose first name i don't know but great 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 grandpa uh from the civil war and he looks normal i also have a picture of uh agnes i mean the hair for agnes the hair for agnes is obviously of the time but facially she looks like a person like a person you would see today she looks like, um, what's the name of the principal in Matilda again? <gasps> oh, I know the who you Yeah, about. Trunchbull. Yes! Like, her fi- a little like, bit. Because her face is round, it kind of makes me think of her. But, obviously but not she looks nicer famous, than like... Trunchbull does. <laughs> but I guess I didn't realize she was ten years younger than him, too. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, that, I guess that was kind of a little bit more normal. Yeah, women married pretty young compared to their husbands. True. I don't imagine 10-year age difference is much yeah. to call home about at that time. Mm. Do we know when they married? Yes, they, well, they didn't, they were common law. Oh, right. I believe. Oh, right. They state. One second. But it's not like today where you just live together for a certain number of years and then the state gives you benefits. Like, you can't just start living with someone of the opposite gender. Yeah, I don't remember what year it was. It was after 1904. So, like, around 10-ish years they'd been living together? Yeah, around that. Well, wait, 19, no, 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 That's like 12? Wait, no, sorry, my my head got mixed around. Yes, yes, you're right. I was thinking 1910, right. but it was 1916 when he had come. Oh. Out. This episode uh, is just filled with a lot of bad math. <laughs> Us. We're, <laughs> we're terrible done with math. School. Listen, it is like 9 p.m. We all go to work in the morning. We have Not me. I'm in work. a closet. <laughs> Well, I've had my I've had enough work for the week. <laughs> We're not in a closet. It's just her. Just Kelsey. Listen, I'm closet. out of the closet. It's fine. <laughs> what What would the being in the closet have to do with your math skills? <laughs> not enough air to it's go just, in that you know, brain, that's I guess. Just where I'm... Not enough air for that noggin. This is just where I am in life, sitting with all of my clothes in the dark. I mean, Kelsey, I think it's, it's time not to a come time out for of the math. closet. It's 2022, girl. Never. Get out of there. Get out of there. Um, oh, I'm free. I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm free. still thinking about how like Loveless's face in that photo just looks like a bad mannequin. I guess like um, I'm trying to remember which corpse, which famous corpse this was, where they were just like, oh, we're gonna, we're so good at like not taxidermy. Um, uh, like that preservation, yeah, preservation over there, whatever. And they go like, "Oh, your loved one will be so embalming, life- embalming." Yeah, embalming. I had to think about this for a second. I was just like, "We it's can't been a while. do math. We can't think of basic words." I mean, we're just embalming is not war basic, era. uh, considering the whole process. And they just go like, "Oh yeah, they look so lifelike." I think it was. I think I'm thinking of, um, like Mao Zedong, uh, um, or. Was it? Is it Stalin? It's not Stalin. It's the other guy Stalin's in Russia. Also. No, he's he's actually kind of fine. No, but the famous uh, one. What is it? Lenin? Are you talking about Lenin? Lenin. Yes, Lenin. Lenin, Lenin, is, Lenin. He's fine. I'm trying to remember. It, oh, it's Ava Perone. Sorry, I had to like sing a little song in my head. Uh, I had to sing a little song in my head about uh, RuPaul's Drag Race, and they have like female historical figures, and I was just like. Uh, da, 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 da. Ava Perone. Ava Perone was like one of those historical figures that like really had a lot of work done on her um when she died because someone was like i'll do it uh it's been a while since i've really looked into this uh and she just looked like a doll doll parentheses derogatory because they were like she doesn't look real she looks fake that's what he looks like he looks like a bad mannequin like a really bad oh madame trousseau i have a wax figure for you and they go that's ugly get rid of it melt him down in a crayola crayons get rid of him you were so right. It looks like the mo- like the original movie, The Mask. Like, it looks like that can't be his face. I think it must just be that the lighting is really well, weird. Well, I think this also could have been... It has to be that. I don't know if this is... This is the only picture I have. I think this might be a composite image rather than an actual image, and they just weathered it for the feel? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so I was this. right that it was more of a rendering yeah, than, like, yeah. a photo? Oh, Wow. That makes way more sense. Okay, I was gonna go like okay. that. Nobody looks like photo. that. But he looks like such a cowboy! And that explains... He does. That explains, though, why the face looks so, like, <laughs> shapeless and formless. It's because they don't have a head. That's... Actually, now that we're going back full circle of that, and we've just... Disc- it's kind of accepted that the theory is that they just did frontier justice. Did they take the head and do something specific with it? Like, as a town? Was that, like, just somewhere and it just wasn't written down anywhere? They had to have done something with the head. I mean, Maybe it's also an extensive river. cave system, and there's probably other bits of geography that we just don't know about. Someone just threw just it, it down a giant hole in the cave system. We're like, bye! 
Yeah. That's possible. But I feel like if you're going to do something as extensive as chop, killing him, chopping up his body, burying it in various parts of this cave system, and then the head's just not there. Like, the head is such a specific piece. It is. That, yeah, maybe it was carried off by the wildlife. It's possible. Maybe it's just somewhere deeper. But I feel like if you're going to go all that to that trouble... You did something with the head. I think they probably wouldn't do anything because they're like, nothing happened with his previous wife. So they're just like, they're, we're not going to give him any recognition. We're just going to let him die here. And then no one will recognize him because he's heckin' worthless. He's not a great person. So they probably don't want to give him the recognition as like a person. Because I don't think you'd want to bring... It would be cool historically to be like, yeah, this is like some guy's head. And we like killed him off and stuff. But like concerning that this is back then they were probably like um yeah jesus said that we shouldn't do that but we kind of had to because he was not very cool his vibes were whack so we had to old yeller him ourselves um and they probably would not want to talk about that because if word gets out maybe something we- not something weird i don't know it's back then, and they'd probably yeah, be like... Yeah, no, they would not huh. talk about it. Yeah, so that's probably why they didn't do anything about it, and also Native Americans would do more of, like, the head thing or in the West, or, like, scalping, I think. Um, well, maybe but... that was the point. Maybe they were trying to, if anyone found the body, they were trying to make it look like he got attacked by Native Americans of the area, maybe. And my other thing, they wouldn't talk about any of this. There is no way that secret carried by like 10 of the town's officials didn't go to the grave until somebody found the body there's if we hadn't found the body no one would ever know about maybe this. that's probably what they wanted i'm not saying they like i'm not saying they'd like put the head up for display or anything but if they did something with the head they did you know it's like in a river or somewhere else specific that's like a fuck you to this guy like something particular but again that's an assumption they may have done nothing with the head and it just might be a coincidence that we never found it well, that's kind of what we got for today. I don't think this is... I think it's disappointing that we don't know where the head is. But I'm kind of satisfied with the locals taking on, you know, vigilante justice with a man who murdered his wife. I'm pretty... I'm settled with that. I'm okay that they got away with this. I'm okay with them getting away with this. I am I wish we had more information about who this person was. I know. I'm so like some curious. Of the other stuff to get a better understanding of the story, but like... I just don't think they had the records at the time, and no one really talks about it. I think they tried to talk to, like, a former family member um, that's still alive, like, someone's his great-grandchild or grandchild, and they just didn't want to talk about it, and the family doesn't want to talk about it, so... That's kind of fair. They don't know anything. And um, I mean, how much would they have known? Exactly also very fair yeah because it's like there's only he's only had two kids in total right for the most part like five. five. Oh, sorry two i was thinking about like one with one wife and then one with the other so i was just like herm no it was one with one wife some with the other i imagine anything they told younger kids would probably be like yeah he killed mom and we don't talk about it probably it was also probably... But he got what was coming to they him. They probably wanted to separate themselves from that reputation as much as possible, too. Do you think they changed their name? That's fair. Probably, like, rel- uh, current relatives of, like, mm. uh, big political figures, like Hitler himself and such, for examples, I guess. Or, you know, which is very I think fair. that it would be funny and kind of a weird legacy thing if, in honor of him doing so many aliases... To avoid being associated with him at all, they all got aliases. And I think it would be especially funny if they changed from loveless to, like, loving or something. Just to be like, fuck you. (laughs) It's not loveless. It's loveful. Thank you. Full of love. That's all we got for you today, folks. Thanks for coming by our table of disappointment. I hope you leave as satisfied as we are today. And we'll see you... The next time we want to talk about something horrible and disappointing. Bye, everyone. Have a good one. Wahoo. Good night, everyone. Wahoo.